Hello, my brush lads, lasses, and everybody in between. My name is Tyler, and today we are bringing you another Commander Deck Tech on Unesh, Cryosphinx Sovereign. Let's see how long I can get through this video before I screw up the word Sphinx. As always, though, before we get started in the video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy what we're doing here at Partners With. And let me know down in the comment section below, which word in magic do you always screw up? Is it Bogle versus Boggle? That one still gets me. Anyway, on to the deck tech. Unesh Cryosphinx Sovereign is a 4-4 legendary Sphinx for 4 blue blue. Comes with flying, has Sphinx spells, cost 2 less to cast, and whenever he or another Sphinx enters the battlefield under our control, we reveal the top 4 cards of our library. An opponent separates those cards into two piles, and we put one of those piles into our hand, and the other into our graveyard. While Lunesh is great, he's not actually the Dex Commander, despite being the Dex Commander. See, our secret commander, hidden in our 99, is Atemsis, All Seeing. Another legendary Sphinx, this one being a 4-5 for 3 blue blue blue, who has 2 and a blue, tap, draw 2 cards, then discard a card. But Atemsis has an extra ability in, when they deal damage to an opponent, you may reveal your hand. If cards with at least 6 different converted mana costs are revealed this way, that player loses the game. So the goal of the deck is to always know what cards are on the top of our deck so that we can carefully curate and craft our hand while also digging for a Temsis to quickly eliminate all of our opponents. We have a couple different ways of doing this. Our first batch of cards are things that draw us cards because the more cards we have in hand, the easier it is to curate our hand to meet a Temsis's requirement. While many cards in the deck help us with that, as Blue is very good at drawing, I think the two that embody this ability the most are the Consecrated Sphinx and Kindred Discovery. Both make excellent use of Unesh's ability to cheapen our Sphinxes, with Consecrated Sphinx being a Sphinx itself, and with Kindred Discovery drawing us more cards as we play more Sphinxes. The other big method we have of always knowing what's on top of our deck or what's coming are things with scry. Specifically, while we have lots of things that will scry a certain amount when they enter the battlefield, our most valuable pieces are going to be ones that let us scry repeatedly. For those unaware, scry is when you look at the top X amount of cards of your deck, and then you decide which ones you want to keep on top and which ones you want to put onto the bottom. For example, the artifact Crystal Ball for 3 mana lets us pay 1 and tap to scry 2, meaning we get to look at the top 2 cards of our deck, and then we can put them back in any order, we can put them both on the bottom, we can put one on the top, one on the bottom, we get the choice. Mystic Speculation is another very good example. For a single blue sorcery with a buyback of 2, we get to scry 3. So for 3 mana, we have a continuous source of scrying 3 and digging through our deck to find a Temsis or more converted mana costs to help a Temsis win con go off. Aqueous Form is a great way of not only letting a Temsis get through by making it so the enchanted creature can't be blocked, but whenever the enchanted creature attacks, we get to scry 1. So if we have enough cards in our hand to eliminate an opponent, we can make sure that what we're drawing into can help us deal with the rest of our opponents. We get this ability as well on cards like Prognostic Sphinx. For 3 blue blue, we get a 3-5 Flying Sphinx that, by discarding a card, gains Hexproof until end of turn and taps itself, meaning it's not able to attack, but it also can't be targeted. However, when it does attack, we get to scry 3. If that's not enough, we also run regular cards that just let us know what is on top of our library and make use of it. Cards like Sphinx of Juar Isle or Sensei's Divining Top that basically will always let us know what is on top of our deck, which pairs well with Conundrum Sphinx. For two blue blue, we get a 4-4 Sphinx that whenever it attacks, we all choose a card name, us as well as our opponents, and then we reveal the top card of our libraries. For the players that reveal the chosen card name, 
they put that card into their hand, and if they don't, they put it at the bottom of their library. This is basically free card draw for us, and that we should always know what, at the very least, the top card of our library is. I think this is a very fun way to take a blue deck. While it does have some counter magic and aspects of control, mostly just to keep Unesh and Atemsis safe, I think it does a great job of not being overbearing and unfun to play against, and the extra mini game of having a Tempsis in our 99 as a secret commander makes it so we're maybe not on our opponent's radars as much as we probably should be. If this deck intrigues you, please check out the list in the description down below to go check out our MTG Goldfish page to see how I have built this deck. I'd love to know what additions or changes you have down in the comment section below. As always, thank you for listening to what we do here at Partners With. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this in the future. And we will catch you guys later. Peace!